I'm delighted to welcome uh, the Labour Party spokesperson on foreign affairs, uh, Michael D. Higgins. Michael, yeah. welcome to, to the uh, right hook. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, because I'm feeling so weak, I, I felt I needed some help on matters of foreign affairs. So Deputy uh, Higgins has, has uh, gladly stood into the breach, Michael. So I'm just going to kick this off with a question uh, to Michael D. Michael, what's your view on, on this boat on its way to Gaza with aid and so on, on which we have some uh, Irish elected representatives, in fact? Yes, well, the people of Gaza are effectively under siege. Uh, you have about 80% of the people are unemployed. They're dependent on the United Nations Refugee Works Agency for most of their food. Because you have had an absence of materials to reconstruct the electricity generators and the basic milling, for example, there's one mill there. I was in Gaza a few months ago. Uh, I had been there many times. Uh, effectively, you see little children... Uh, playing on top of pieces of rubble with bits of steel sticking out of them. You had everything, even where there was no possible person from Hamas uh, present last December when the destruction took place. The, uh, you, you about For about maybe 400 metres inside the border, there was an ice cream factory that was bombed. But... John Ging, uh, who is a graduate of NUIG, who is a distinguished servant of the UNRWA, former student of my own, by the way, and he is in charge of UNRWA. He tries to feed the people. It was an attempt on his life about two or three weeks ago. The people of Gaza, I repeat, it is a, not just a humanitarian tragedy, it is an international scandal. And the flotilla of boats that is heading, some from Turkey, some from Cyprus, and some which indeed include people from the Irish Oireachtas, uh, are trying to bring uh, basic materials, um, including school books, printing materials and so forth, to Gaza. And I think that, it, it, I hope the siege is broken. For example, the argument always against them would be that you have some materials travelling over from Israel into Gaza. I've tra travelled from, I've done it both ways. I have travelled over from Israel into Gaza as well, and what you have is a trickle. But you, 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 uh, you, you, at the moment, the people are just being just okay. d beaten into the ground, and they deserve our support, the people of Gaza. Now, they have I, my support. May I, but, may I ask a question? Yeah, you And by the way, it. it is a real honour to be on the radio with you, uh, uh, Deputy Higgins. I appreciate it. I want to tell you that later in, the sh in this conversation, I'm going to put your political skills as the former mayor of Galway to the ultimate test. So be ready. That's later. I just want to ask, why is it is w that when the withdrawal occurred and Israel pulled back and said, here, the people who call yourself Palestinians have these autonomous regions and, and govern yourself, why is it that almost the next day, rockets began pouring into Israel. Why well, is that the case? Well, of course, it didn't happen that way because I was in Gaza five weeks after the withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, you see, this is the difference. I know that kind of uh, uh, stuff you're on. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, it's, I'm proud to say it's called Guinness. Good, but I'm way. saying, but I'm 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 saying you should really, they should patent it because it's, uh, it's having an effect that I've never heard before. But the point is, I was in Gaza. I was there with Andreas Van Acht, the former, pres the former Prime Minister of Holland, and f six others. Uh, we had our own translator, our own bus. Mm -hmm. We spent about two weeks in, generally in Israel and going into mm -hmm. Gaza itself. And the rockets did not fluff the start immediately. Not at all. You're talking about his Darosh, which I also visited. Mm -hmm. And in fact, for several months before the invasion of Gaza, there were no rockets at all. Mm -hmm. And what people are continually saying now, you know, in a way, is, is that there must be, you, uh, the, the suggestion is, is that you have a kind of an equally proportionate sets of violence between supporters of Hamas mm -hmm. and, uh, and Israel. The response of Israel, if you just look at the number of mm -hmm. Palestinians, and they don't call Call themselves Palestinians. They are Palestinians. And, the and we're talking Palestine about you're what? talking about their homeland. And, and you're talking in the West Bank. What? Yes, you're talking about in the West Bank, you're talking about people, for example, 
who have been there and you are right about it the children of Abraham for example which include the Jewish people as well they all occupied the same space mm -hmm. but the issue the issue is the the issue the issue is one uh, the issue is one of, of 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 respect if you like for the rights of Palestinian people to to live in peace the, the practical suggestion that has been around for some time is for the creation of two states mm -hmm. you could never have created a state in Gaza for example you speak about the withdrawal. Mm -hmm. The withdrawal didn't include, for example, control over the seaport, mm -hmm. the right to land right. a plane. It mm -hmm. didn't include control over right. the borders. Right. What it did was it took the roadblocks out of the internal part of Gaza mm -hmm. and it increased mm -hmm. a great deal of okay. security on the border. So Gaza needed to be contiguous and connected to the West Bank. You needed to give that state the right to take its decisions mm -hmm. that any other state would. And then you'd be getting somewhere. But, but frankly, you know what it is where I I'd listen to you very carefully. The contribution of the fundamentalist madness from the United States into the Israeli is probably one of the greatest obstacles to peace right. in the region. And that was an extensive amount of words. And, and I appreciate it. In other words, answer the question, why are the people of Gaza firing on the people of But Israel? they're not. Why do they keep... The well, who is firing rockets? So the why are you... Injured, you know, so you're, you're, you're on to the old Sarah... You're on to the old Sarah Palin madness speak? now. Of, I, I'm looking at allow, Russia and Russia's threatening. Threat we have free speech kind of old nonsense. Yeah. Is there free speech in Ireland? Or oh, yes, there is, is. and you're taking because up a lot of it. Yeah. Because there is, an in, there is an injured man <laughs> in Israel who had his leg practically blown off by a rocket out of Gaza that fell in the set of town that you pronounce much better than I do. The rockets flew. Are you saying yeah, that the rockets are made times, up? Yeah. The explosions that happened inside Israel, what, they didn't happen? Mm -hmm. Are you saying they're imagining the people are being fired upon? The rockets exist, sir, and you just spoke for five minutes and never addressed the only problem, which is the violence of Arabs directed towards Israelis, backed by anti-Semites and people close to anti-Semitism here in Europe who will not confront violence. It is an un indefensible violence. I think, frankly, before you get carried away and say that anyone who is in favor of a reasonable peace solution in the Middle East is somehow or another anti-Semitic, mm -hmm. that's an old, old one, really, and we don't really need it all over again. Well, uh, the fact retract. of the matter is, when you have stopped ranting, you will find out. I have never such a... You see, this, this is the difference between late arrivals like yourself. You're about as late arrival in Irish politics as Sarah Palin is in American politics. <laughs> and both of you have the same tactic. The tactic is to get a large crowd, whip them up, try and discover what is the greatest fear, work on that, and feed it right back and, and you get a frenzy. And that leads you in time then to when you have, in fact, maybe one of the most gifted presidents elect. I happen not to agree with all his foreign policy, but you know you regard, for example, someone who happens to have been a professor at Harvard as somehow or another handicapped. You don't find anything wrong at all with this Tea Party ignorance that is being brought all around the United States, <laughs> well, which is regularly insulting people who have been democratically elected. Uh, Deputy Higgins, I'm not going to insult you. Oh, I by, think you should. By bringing up I think your you, lack of knowledge of the Tea Party movement. Other than I lived in the United that, States, and do you know one of the interesting things, Mike? Do you know the big difference as I listened? Mm -hmm. I lived in the Midwest, in mm -hmm. Willie Nelson country. I was a student there at the end of the 60s. Mm -hmm. I was a professor in Illinois way when, at the end of the 70s. Mm -hmm. The magnificent, decent, generous people of the United States with whom I had supper. People I sat on there and mm -hmm. they ate homemade ice cream with them. The difference between them and the tiny elite who are in charge of warmongering foreign policy of the United States is just enormous. The so therefore when you go on your picnic around the country, you're really not representing the decent United States people mm -hmm. who are very proud, correctly, of the person they've elected president, which they're entitled to By do. Way, president Obama's support right now is 42 percent. Ah, the yeah. tiny elites you're talking about are President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Harry Root who have driven the economy into even to the crap or even more deeply. But I want to go back to your concerns about anti-Semitism. Yeah. I would draw any allegation that people who support peace or a two-state solution are anti-Semites. After Palestine, all, the yeah. government of Israel supports two-state solution. I would say that people that defend the murderers of Jews are anti-Semites. And when you who support the, when who you does support that? the Hamas government who does of that? Gaza, that's who what supports they the murderers Hamas of Jews? Hamas and who Hezbollah does? Are you saying and the I people do? who support them are supporting the murderers of Jews because their stated position in their
their own document, uh, their own yeah. founding document, is the elimination of the nation of Israel, sir. No, it isn't, actually. When you actually. say that you want ships to come to Gaza, you know what's on those ships because they've been captured. The tons of weapons that have been captured to be used to kill Jews. You won't even admit you, that the bombs fell, sir. You, you have about five the major fell, porkies there now. First of all, you have no proof whatsoever because you didn't bother no to... proof? The yeah. ship that was captured oh, yeah. going to Gaza uh, with yeah. loads of weapons from Iran? Which one? From Iran, Which sir. one? From Iran. Which ship was You're, captured? Point. There are many ships with weapons Oh, from Iran. I see. Yeah. Well, do you know what it is? As you get farther and farther away from the facts, you'll be able to increase the number of ships. <laughs> the ship that... Uh, I'll the, stick with the, the one, ship that my The ship that my colleagues are on, for example, is mm -hmm. called the Rachel Corrie. Mm -hmm. Who is Rachel Corrie? Why is mm -hmm. it called Rachel Corrie? Because Rachel Corrie was bulldozed into the ground that as a peace a worker. Oh, yeah. She, she doesn't lie. matter. Yeah, anything about the and wouldn't tunnel, you think the it mattered to you that she was a United of? States the citizen? The tunnel that you're standing in front of? But it's very interesting. Oh, yeah. Keep it up. You yeah, see, that's true. Was, Are you denying that no, there was a weapons true. tunnel there? Are I'm you denying that? That's a fact. In fact, not only that, the Gazans have now admitted that there was a weapons tunnel there. I'm just saying that you're, in fact, not dealing... You are not dealing with facts. I'll keep quoting facts and you'll keep quoting propaganda. Propaganda. Go right ahead. Well, I think, you know, if you talk, I'm talk quoting propaganda. You you're talking about ships that you don't know the name of. You don't know the number of. You're really a good student of that kind of journalism that says, well, look at If I can get away with it, it's good. If I can work people up, it's even better. But the fact of the matter is, this is just, frankly, this is, this is very, very dangerous stuff. Why? You said, for example, for example, how, 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 how can you say that I am in favor of anyone murdering any Jewish you're supporting person? supporting the government of a I Iran had never said that I'm supporting You're the government supporting of Hamas. Right now, you I'm supposed to have the tools. But here we go again. You see, can I ask you, by the sure, way, by when the way. were Hamas elected in the West Bank and in Gaza? Answer the question. I don't know. You don't know. No. Now, how many groups are in Gaza besides Hamas? There's, I don't, the, the specific number, I don't know. Oh, I mean, no, you don't, you don't know. know. So many and, now, and how many rockets were fired There's last year from, from Gaza? I don't need to know the number. No, okay, do you know what it one. is, you see? You're doing your Sarah trick now. What you Sarah Palin just only knows to know where Russia is. Wait, wait, I, 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 and she's going to look up at the sky and say, I'm watching them. And they're coming and threatening you. And I and my tea parties and Mike are going to defend you all. I will say this. God help America. I will Yes, Stephanie Higgins, I have more information than you. Oh, yes. I'm willing you to admit that the question. missiles fell. You still won't admit that the missiles were fired. You won't even admit that the rockets fell. You won't even admit the attacks occurred. You won't even admit that Hezbollah and Hamas have fired rockets at hospitals and uh, schools inside yeah. Israel. I think Are you're you talking. That happened? You're talking. Are you denying that happened? I do Are you denying that Hamas and Hezbollah have fired rockets and missiles rockets into were, Israel? Rock deny it. Just, just say, did they do it? Yes or no? Rockets were fired. Yes or no? No, I'll say that the American hospital in Gaza was bombed by the, by, by, by the Israeli authorities. Are you interested in that one? Or what about, for so example, the United the Nations? Building? No, you, I have told you already. There's no question. Did oh, it is, but you won't let me answer because, and Israel this won't work, you see. Hamas, yes this is, no. what, do you know what this is called? This is called the radio of hysterical ignorance. Oh, back, I've sir. been in Starosh. Right. I've been in Starosh. And, and I've rockets, seen did, the rockets. Did the rockets land? Yes, they did. Oh, thank you for answering the question. Go but you know something else that you're on about. I asked you, this is the interesting thing, there were no rockets before the Israeli invasion for nearly nine months. I can tell you the number of rockets that were landed in Starot. Why? Because I went to Starot and spoke to the mayor of Starot. But you have the neck to say that people like me, who are willing to talk to people who are on each side trying to build peace, are somehow or another in favour of people who want to murder Jewish people. Right. That is an outrageous statement. I am not anti-Semitic. I am not in favour of murder. And unlike you, I make my profession in politics, and I worked in human rights, and I condemned Hamas for setting rockets. None of that will matter to you. Because you know what you want? I mean, I wish you well. Keep drinking Guinness and keep ranting away. But don't suggest that those of us who are working for peace in the heat of the day are somehow interested in murdering Jews. Then may I ask a you question? You know where you would have that, by the way? Then may I ask you a question? You then, may you know I ask a question? then may I ask you a know question? What? I know. I'll ask you one now because you asked me the last one. And you know what it is? Okay. There's a man in the United States. You know him. I think you may have interviewed him. Mark B. Klein. He represents 14 Jewish organizations in New York. He organized 45 members of the House of Representatives to sign a letter condemning Barack Obama for giving Mary Robinson the Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was debating with him on a program rather like this. 
And I said to him, how, why, how can you conclude that Mary Robinson is anti-Semitic? And he said, I said, Bishop Tutu, for example. Bishop Tutu is anti-Semitic as well. You're going down that road. And really it is very dangerous stuff. The fact of the matter is, look, young people from the United States are traveling all over the world again. They're welcome in Europe. They're backpackers in hostels. People are talking to them because the image of the United States we've got away from this warmongering is getting better. There are many mistakes Obama is making. At least 47 million people that the likes of you condemn to no health care in a country that I was proud to work in. These people are going to have some health care. Okay. So this is the issue. Are so the therefore be proud to be a decent American so, rather than be just a so, wanker whipping up fear. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I regret uh, that Hold on. Hold on. Hold uh, on. Uh, what I'd like to do because I, 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 I don't want to be I don't want to be involved in this right, because I want both these five speakers to have their say Michael Graham to finish I would like you to, to address the issue of health care because it's a huge issue for many Americans I'd like you to address that uh, on that issue and why also uh, because um, Deputy Higgins has clearly uh, made his view clear about the President of the United States of America you might talk about health care and, and by definition because he supports it it's, it's his policy uh, President Obama well uh, first of all as the right wing nut who's been brought in I want to apologize that as the liberal media says the conversation has been reduced to mindless name calling I apologize I just regret that I was not the person allowed to engage in the mindless name calling I would have gotten to it myself as far as health care the model that the uh, people on the left in Europe want to engage in is, is in full force is in full force in Greece Portugal Italy in fact if you go down the list of the countries that are going broke right now who are dragging down the entire European economy. You can see their model. What makes President Obama the dumbest American president since Jimmy Carter at least is that at a time when we all know that the problem is massive debt and unsustainable government entitlement programs, President Obama has loaded us with $3 trillion in new debt and a massive $2 trillion unsustainable government entitlement program that two days after the president said, I promise you this will save money in the long run, his own administration was forced to admit will cost us at least $130 billion more than it takes in. So it's yet another round of debt. And you know how much $130 billion in government dollars is. Today they tell you it's going to cost $130. What does it really cost during the next 10 years? $1.3 trillion. In fact, if, the, if it's only off by a factor of 10, it'll be one of the most efficient government-run American <laughs> programs in our history. So thank you, Euroweenies, for get, because you've got the Euroweenie president that you want, that we now have the same debt and social welfare model that is destroying economies all over Europe. No wonder you're in such a great mood, a deputy. You're getting the mess in America that you've got in Europe. Congratulations. Well, first of all, I was listening to you earlier, which is interesting. At one point we'll agree on, I think, uh -oh. is that I was, I was one of 21 people out of 166 who voted against any relief to Anglo-Irish Bank. I Thank voted you, against the guarantee Thank in the middle of that. And I also advised on it. It's still the position, not of myself, but of my party, the Labour Party. Would you know about, I spoke about my time in the Midwest and going to the Greyhound bus station mm -hmm. and hearing for the first time the phrase poor white trash. Mm -hmm. These people who, you know, I was there just before the civil rights uh, charter came in. And frankly, the idea that a person would not have one job but have two jobs or three jobs and work all the light hours that are there and still not be entitled to the basic protection of fundamental care is so outrageous. So whether you agree with Obama on what he is doing in aspects of his foreign policy, and I might disagree with some things about Latin South America, but one Peter of the Pan? things I do agree, the idea of there being a social floor below which people wouldn't fall, that's the future. The old paradigm, your friend Mr. Lehman, who is now in jail, the Lehman's Bank, the, our friends who are all there. You know the most interesting thing of, of the old Republican uh, line was 
They were the people who wanted soft regulation. Mm. And now that so many bankers are in jail and so forth, well, they're just people who are on a holiday. And now you can start giving bonuses again for products that really never existed. For example, based on mortgage indebtedness, mm -hmm. subprime lending and all of that. Mm -hmm. Do you know the truth of it is I have sympathy for what, in fact, Obama has to deal with. 24% of the United States deficit is owned by China. Mm -hmm. Another 11% is owned by Japan. The United States can't go broke because we'll bring the world down with it. Frankly, in the meantime, by the way, I think even the poorest people in the great country that is the United States should be entitled to basic health care. Okay. And I don't think they'll thank the Sarah Palin lookalikes and followers for taking it off them. You, you just, one, just one quick comment. Yeah, which quick. Is, no, very quick. I, I appreciate your comments. I have to correct you on one item. I, don't, I wish a president, um, America couldn't go broke, but with President Obama at the helm, it is entirely impossible. Absolutely. All right, and uh, we have to get our news at six o'clock. My thanks to Deputy Michael D. Higgins who came all the way, coming home from Dublin, he took time out to come to us here today at the King's Head in Galway. We'll have uh, sport, music, more crack in the final hour, and then we'll set Michael loose on the streets of Galway. That's Michael American rather than Michael Connacht. <laughs> all right, uh, that's it for the moment.